Hey there, it's Nathalie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. So today's project, we're going, we're in the sewing room, and so we're going to make a white, plain white cotton slip with a little casing at the top for the elastic. And uh, my friend Sandy is fixing to leave on a mission trip, and they have to wear skirts uh, all the time where they're going. And so she needed, just needed a little cotton slip. And so it's, it's lightweight, it's uh, not a big deal. And uh, anyway, don't go away, be sure you hang around. Subscribe, give me a thumbs up, share me with your friends. Anyway, let's, let's get over to the cutting table and get started. For this simple cotton slip, the first thing I did was wash my cotton. It's just lightweight white cotton. Washed it in hot water to go ahead and shrink it and uh, put it in the dryer. And uh, that took her hip measurements and added six inches for wiggle room and then also an inch for the uh, seam allowance, half an inch on each side for the seam allowance. Now we're only gonna have one seam, that'll be in the back. Then I've added, took our length that she wanted, added one inch for the hem and an inch and a half for the turn under for the elastic casing. For the elastic, I took her waist measurement minus two inches and that's gonna also leave me uh, like an inch joining or join that together and so that'll make it just a nice comfortable uh, it get, it'll give this is a soft elastic so it'll give it a nice little stretch not too tight not too loose anyway so let's go to the sewing machine I'm gonna surge all the way around And that's as much of that as you need to see. This fabric is white cotton and it does not appear to have a right or wrong side. But if it had a pattern, it would be right sides together. And I'm gonna take a half inch seam. There's my half inch mark right, uh, right there. And so that I'm going to, it'll actually, I can run my presser foot by this edge of this surging and that'll work for me. So my machine always makes that funny sound when it starts off. About a medium length, I'm a back stitch. Okay, just so you know, I could have stitched this first and then gone to the serger and stitched both of these edges together. I could have done that. Uh, I could have uh, put two needles in my serger and serged it and stitched it at the same time. But on the off chance that you don't have a serger to do that, that's the reason I serge this. You can actually do a zigzag or use a pair of pink and shears and cut this edge and then stitch your pieces together. So that's the reason that I did that the way that I did that. Now I'm going to measure down an inch and a half for my elastic casing and I'll be back. All right, since there's not a pattern on here, there's not a top or bottom, so it doesn't really matter which one I turn under for the top or which one I turn under for the hem. But I'm going to show you two different things. One, if you don't have a serger or a serged edge, then what you're going to do is you're going to turn under, For this is for the elastic, You'll turn under an inch and a half, pretend like this is not surged, and then let's do a little pin, a couple of pins, or clips, however you want to do that. So let's do, let's get over here, inch and a half, we'll slide that up to where that's an inch and a half. And so what you would do, because our, our elastic, I think I'm repeating myself, is an inch wide, then you could turn under a little half inch, not quite a half inch, maybe about a quarter of an inch, and then that way you can stitch right on the edge, and then you'll have room to put your elastic in, plus just a little bit of give. All right, you don't want to get it too, too close. But since this is a surged edge, then all I'm going to do, I'm going to turn up an inch and a quarter, all right, because it has a surged edge. So I'm going to start here, but that's not where I'm going to start my stitching, it's just where I'm starting my pin process. So an inch and a quarter all the way around. I'll do a couple of these and then, so lining that up, I've measured that to an inch and a quarter. And so the, now, then my stitch is gonna go like right along the top edge of that surged line. And I'll have that a little bit of amount of space for putting the elastic in. I know it's white on white, it's hard to see, don't fuss at me. It's all pinned and we can go to the sewing machine. I am going to leave about two inches open 
uh, oh, let, I'm going to go past this seam here. I'm going to stitch catch this. I'm going to leave about two inches opening for putting my elastic in. Now there are other ways that you can attach this elastic, but this is this one is really a good, easy beginner elastic technique. So uh, my seam is back here. I'm going to leave me a, a couple of inches open, and I'm going to do a back stitch to start off with, and then I'm stitching right next to this. Uh, surged edge and if you were turning it under because you don't have a serger you would just be stitching right along a little folded edge like right there I know it's white it's white it's hard to see all right it's my little seam line I want to stitch across this seam line this is where I started so I want to do a back stitch right here Cut the thread and now I'm going to go back over to my cutting table and then show you how to thread that elastic through that casing. All right, here's my opening for my uh, elastic. I'm going to take a safety pin and put it through the end of the elastic. And then just thread this through, keeping that elastic straight and flat. Now if it folds on you for a minute, that's okay, because then you can actually just kind of work it around to flatten it back out. Let me turn that like that so you can see. The main thing is that you don't pull this end all the way through when you get down towards the last part of this. So most of my instructions are for beginner seamstresses, and so if you feel like I'm uh, talking in really simple terms or whatever it's because a lot of my viewers and subscribers which if you're a subscriber thank you so much for subscribing uh, I just I treasure y'all and I appreciate all of your comments and suggestions and even the ones that come in in French and Spanish and I use my little Google Translate to, to do that, to listen, to see what y'all have to say. All right, I'm going to finish going around, then I'll show you how. All right, I'm getting close to the end. My safety pin is right there. So one of the tricks that I do to make sure that I don't pull my elastic all the way through uh, by accident, I hate when I do that, is I'll go ahead and put a pin in that to secure that, and that makes sure that I don't do that. So now I'm going to work this the rest of the way through. I've got just a couple of more inches to go. And uh, make sure I get it through that little seam. There we go. Pretty easy to work through there. I've got, like I say, I've got enough room to, to work with this. All right. Now then, you see how that's kind of folded a little bit there? I want to make sure that that is flat as I pull this through and I want to adjust some of this fullness but not too much to start off with just yet. I'm going to pull me out some uh, ends so that I have a place to stitch these together. And then I'm going, this is me, you can attach this any way you like to. I am going to attach it flat like, like that and I'll do some uh, back stitching back and forth on that. But the other thing I want to make sure is that I am flat, that my elastic is not twisted inside this little waistband. Now, back to the sewing machine. So I've overlapped this about like, oh, a half an inch, three quarters of an inch, something like that. With elastic, it's not like really rocket science. And then I just want to do a back stitch. And I'm going to kind of angle it just a little bit. And I don't know if you can see me twisting that. Just a little bit. So it's not a zigzag per se, but it actually does kind of zigzag. It's like here and here and here. I could have made a box stitch, but then I'd have to turn it, and I didn't want to do that and I should have clipped the thread with my machine, but I didn't do that either. So now, 
Let's see if I can do this up close with you. I want to ease this elastic back into the and there's enough fullness in my waistband to be able to do this. So I just adjusted my fullness back and forth to get that elastic to where it would lay in there smoothly. See like that? And now I'm going to go ahead and stitch from here to here to close that gap up. And come back in about an inch from where I started. A little back stitch to get it started. And here's my ending right here. Stitch over that about an inch. Being careful that I don't catch my elastic to start off with. All right, cut the thread, Natalie. There we go. All right, now then I want to adjust my fullness. Now this is not a whole lot. There's not a lot of gathers in this, but I want to do two stitches in here to make sure this elastic stays flat. So I'm going to find my center. So I've got a hold of the center of the back and the center front and I'm going to stretch. You can't see that because I'm too close. And so that's adjusting my the, the fullness of the gathers. Now I want to do two stitches. One here. This is going to be like a side. Uh, it's about halfway between the front and the back. So this would be the side. And this is, again, you know, I'm just kind of estimating. Let's see if I fold that in half, how close I am. There's my halfway, and that's how close I was. I was about a quarter of an inch off. See, I've done this for a really long time, and uh, can get pretty, pretty close on some of my estimations. All right, so what this is going to do, this little stitch is going to keep the, the gathers evenly distributed it and it's also going to help in keeping that elastic from rolling up. So I'm going to just go down and back up. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. off. So then my elastic is uh, inside the little pocket where it needs to be. It's nice and flat, evenly distributed, the size, the right size for her waist. Now I'm going to do uh, the hem on this and I told you to allow an inch so you could, with that inch hem, you could turn and turn if you didn't have a serger or you can just turn it up. You can turn it up an inch or you can turn it up uh, you know, like a, a little half inch, and I think a half inch is what I'm going to do. Or I could just leave the serged edge, or I could a piece, put a piece of lace on there. But I think I'm just going to turn up just about a half an inch, and I'm going to stitch right underneath that uh, serged edge. And I'm going to go all the way around with that. All right, that finishes up this little slip. Now, there's a couple of things I want to tell you about it. Now, uh, there's the hem. It's all nice and hem. Uh, this is, comes to, to her knees, a little above her knees. And uh, this is kind of tall. But anyway, if you were going to make this this width but longer, it would need to have a split, like in the back of it. So I'd come up about six inches, op open this up about six inches, and then, you know, top stitch off the edges of it. Uh, for that, I think they call it like a kick pleat or something like that. So you have room for stepping up steps or, you know, uh, climbing rocks or whatever. I mean, they're going to be in Uganda. But anyway, uh, you probably didn't need to know that. But anyway, here we are. It's all finished up. And you could actually use this as a little kind of a same format to make a skirt, a simple skirt. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Be sure you like, subscribe. Uh, you know, the like and give me the thumbs up, the same thing. Share me with your friends, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.